Hello, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the monthly Q&A here on the Pro Pet Photog YouTube channel. I'm Monique sitting in my green room here at Silver Paw Studio in lovely Colorado. And this is our monthly Q&A. So uh, it's usually the third or fourth week of the month, kind of near the end of the month, usually on a Monday in the afternoon for, well, for Colorado time. <laughs> and this is the time that you can um, ask any kind of pet photography Q&A. Sorry, you're hearing some of my notifications. I have family in the Pacific Northwest where there's a lot of um, wildfires raging right now. And I know a lot of people in that area, they're doing better, but you might hear some dings going around as I make sure everyone's safe. Hello, Heather. Awesome. Welcome in. So it is October now. <laughs> Can you believe it? Can you even believe it? Wow. Uh, let's see. But let's do some banners real quick before everyone comes in. Tons and tons of resources over at uh, propetphotog.com. So you want to check out that website for Oh my gosh, courses and downloads and Canva templates and checklists and oh my gosh, so many things. And in about two months, I'm going to be re relaunching the membership. That's right. Yes, I'll be relaunching that. So we can talk about that more later, but lots of stuff over there. Check out our Pro Pet Photog Facebook FB group. Um, so we have a group, which is really awesome. I think that's, yeah, that's the group. <laughs> the, the, they look kind of the same. Just so you know, when you're on Facebook, make sure if you want to be in the group, uh, there's the group and you must answer all the questions to be allowed in the group. And then um, there's actually a page now too, which is just, you know, pro pet photo. <laughs> there's an open page and I, I try to post just kind of general things on there. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me uh, directly, there we go. Monique at propetphotog.com and um, podcast. So I'm in, trying to get back on the podcast Monday-ish every week. And there you go. Okay. So that's all of that. I have got my iced chai. Now, this is mostly oat milk that I have the little frothy because it's afternoon and I don't want to stay up all night. And then I was at this awesome conference and I won this like bamboo straw. They said it was dishwasher safe and I tried it and it seems fine. All right. Let me just check those um, messages. Oh, it's my editor. Awesome. Okay. Yes. My YouTube editor is due to have a baby in about a month. <laughs> uh, so it might, uh, there might be a time where I, edit the videos again. What? <laughs> no, Katie's Katie's awesome. She loves editing videos for both of my channels and for her channels and other people. That's what she does. That is her special skill. And um, so if you're a YouTuber and you need an editor, I would definitely contact Epic Kate. <laughs> uh, so she was just checking in with me. I just sent her over a bunch of footage. Hello, Senior Yaksan. Hello, everyone. October is passing too quickly. Oh, my gosh. You are not wrong. It is, uh, well, it's exactly midway through. I, I, <laughs> the weather is gorgeous and perfect right now. Um, yeah, I can't believe it. There's This is the last quarter of 2022. My mind is already thinking it's 2023. Isn't that silly? <laughs> Yes, yes, another baby. So uh, Epicate, my editor, she has two uh, twin six-year-olds right now. Uh, and then she has a little boy coming next month. She is an expat. She lives in Sweden with her Swedish husband. Uh, so it's kind of fun. I can send her videos in the afternoon here and then she can just download them while she's sleeping <laughs> and she can upload them to me while she's sleeping. So a lot of times, as soon as I uh, take a look at my my YouTube uh, in a few days. It's right away in the morning. There's the video. It's, it's kind of fun. Uh, it is, and we have enough overlapping time uh, that if I need to talk to her during the day, that's easier. Uh, my photo editors, they're over in Australia, and that was harder to set up a time <laughs> for them. They're just so much further different in time than me. So, 
Oh my gosh, what is everyone up to? I want to know what questions you have. Let's get right into it. If you've got some burning questions you want to ask today, right now, this is your hour for the month. Now, I did have somebody message me with a bunch of different ideas of content. She would, she kind of brainstormed that she'd like to see me cover here. Uh, so I do have some ideas. I have a lot, a lot. I probably have 20 videos here that um, have either titles or even part of the script <laughs> or the outline already ready to go. I'm looking at my other screen. So I have a bunch to record, but I always want to know what's timely, what's topical for you right now. What could you use that, um, you know, I can either research and bring to you or I can give you from my own experience. So kind of, I want to know those things too, what you'd want for produced content here on YouTube. <sighs> Heather and Senior Yaxon, how is the weather in your area? I know uh, my daughter's over in Georgia and it's still pretty warm. <laughs> it's still warm in Georgia. Honestly, it's still kind of warm in the Northwest if they're still having forest fire issues. She was. All right, just booked a table for the Village Hall Christmas Fair. What does that mean? Oh, like a little booth so you can show off your work, but it's smaller because it's a table, kind of like that. Ooh. That's an interesting idea. Will you have things for sale at that table or will you just be talking about um, your business and showing some of the samples? Curious. Contracts, Julie wants to know about contracts. Let me make a note. I do have my rocket book ready, contracts. I can tell you right now, uh, there is a photographer that's an attorney that makes contracts. That is the law tog. I think that's her name. Rachel Brinke, is that right? Um, and she has all kinds of contracts available to photographers. So if you need a quick fix, Julie, I would definitely look up the Law Tog, I believe it's called. Um, and if you look up contracts for photographers, she usually comes up. <laughs> There's very few people that are attorneys and photographers, I think. Or maybe they just don't want to tell us. <laughs> um, my estate attorney, she's like, don't tell anyone I'm an attorney. <laughs> She never, like, if we go to business meetings together, she's like, shh, 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 don't tell people I'm an attorney. <laughs> she's so funny. But she's an estate attorney specifically for Colorado. So if she doesn't do contracts, like, turn it, turn it, right? Uh, here's some of the topics that we've got coming up. Um <clears throat> I want to talk about a little bit more about working with clients, Julie says. You have it, just asking for more info on specifics. Oh, okay. Um, I got to be careful in there because I'm not an attorney <laughs> and I'm not that great at using contracts, but I think I need to be better. Um, so I think that's something I'll be implementing more heavily next year. I, I, do, I do have contracts for my video production clients, but not really as much I used to <laughs> for my... Um, my private commission, like this kind of pictures, like we all do here. Uh, so I used to have a little contract and it mostly went over copyright law. What happens if there is extreme weather, how we re, um, reschedule or if we have to cancel. It had some of those kinds of things in it. Um, and I found that I rarely had clients sign them, but it's so easy through my CRM now to just do that through HoneyBook that I may as well just bam, 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 have it part of my workflow process. Yeah. Uh, thought I'd talk about what I do. Maybe sell photo cards. Yes. Um, Heather, some unsolicited advice is have a drawing. Gather emails. Events for me are all about gathering emails. My last event was this tiny little event, and I got all these email addresses. I don't know, like 30, which was awesome. Really great. So if you can have like an activity to do, when I went to this big conference the other day, there was like a spinning wheel and you can win a little something, which is probably how I got my new straw <laughs> and so, some other fun things. Um, have something for them to do or a drawing to enter. That, that always perks people up. Wait, I can win this? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so actually I'm photographing the, one of the winners uh, from that uh, next week. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so as far as what I've got planned coming up, let me just read from my Google Doc over here. I want to talk more about clients, um, you know, 
problem clients, uh, ideal clients, uh, things like that, expect setting expectations, those kinds of things. Um, you know, and I went, I've, I think I've only had like one main video about that. And that's what the planning meeting, but I'd like to talk a little bit more about that. Because I think that kind of trips us up when we first start like, Oh, gosh, what do I say? How do I behave? What's what's a normal thing to do while talking to my clients? Um, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the software that I use. Uh, so my CRM, my email program, uh, different softwares that I use, and maybe even do some deeper dives if if you're all interested. Um, those typically do really well on YouTube because they're tutorials like here's exactly how I set up a workflow in HoneyBook or here's how I send out an email through ConvertKit, things like that. And so I can do a deeper like tutorial on that specific software. But at this point, I'm just thinking of a overview, like here's all of the apps that I use and a little bit of why and some of the features. Uh, so some of that uh, talk about email, uh, marketing, 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 I have a ton of things coming up for marketing. Um, it's getting harder and harder to market. Um, I'm feeling that myself right now, really feeling that this year. Um, so we're going to talk a lot about marketing, we're going to work through some things together. I'm going to do new videos on my top tips or something like that, like for dog photography and cat photography. I think those are really great for the, for especially people's just starting like your volunteer efforts. A lot of us started as volunteer pet photographers for shelters and causes. Uh, so it's nice to have some of those tech videos here too. Um, <clears throat> editing, we're going to talk a little bit about editing coming up in the coming months. Uh, there's some cool new features in Lightroom. And I think they are amazing, <laughs> even though I'm mostly outsourcing my editing right now. And I'm hoping maybe though that guy would be on a video with me, but it'd be again, hard to um, coordinate because he's in Australia. <laughs> um, but I really would love to talk about the company that I outsource my editing to, but also give you some more tips for editing in Lightroom because I haven't done that in like eons, <laughs> eons, uh, a gear list. Um, you know, talk a little bit about gear, minimal gear, my dream gear kit, things like that. Um, and then, you know, I want to talk a little bit about um, how we can stay positive and motivated and inspired ourselves. So um, I have a lot of things coming up. I really do. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Julie asks, maybe I should say suggestions or ideas on what others specify, such as grooming prior, etc. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. Oh, HoneyBook's not in the UK? Really? That's kind of strange. There are a lot, a lot of CRMs. I've used um, 17 hats as well, and they're okay. I think I just wanted something more visual. <laughs> At the time, HoneyBook seemed like a good idea. Uh, Dubsado, Sprout Studio, Tave. Uh, oh my gosh. I think I just saw a, um, I watched um, Hear the Dog, the podcast the other day. And I think she uses like Monday now, which is not even a photography one. It's just, you know, a general one. There's so many. <laughs> I know people who live on, oh, uh, well, that's, that's more of content planning. Notion is content planning, but yeah, those are those are a lot of good ones. And I could, I don't know a, a lot about a lot of them. <laughs> but I could do kind of a rundown. I'm not sure I just kind of like work, talking about the things that I've personally used. And 17 hats, I probably switched from that two years ago. So they're probably a lot different now. And honestly, HoneyBook was really nice because I got a really good deal. <laughs> For like the first year, it was a great deal. <laughs> so I was like, well, might as well. And also, it worked really well with my commercial type clients, my business clients. I do, I'd like to do more of the B2B, especially video production. Um, so it works really well for those types. Um, and it does, it works for pet photography too. <laughs> it does. I did all of my book project through there. Yeah. Yeah, she was using Dubsado, right? And I can't remember why she doesn't anymore, if she said specifically. But then she went to Monday, and now she's going to go to CloudSpot, I think, when they offer that. 
is it cloud spot julie do you remember what she said it was a whole it, it was the, her whole last episode and i looked into it it looked pretty cool but i don't think i want to change until they do have a crm because then maybe i can change everything over to that because i have pixie set right now too oh there's another software piece <laughs> um so pixie sets also good um so I definitely need to do a roundup video of all the software I use because I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> and we're, we're professionals here. Like we have a ton of software. Oh my gosh. I get so caught up in showing you behind the scenes of actual photo sessions. Um, I'm, I need to concentrate a little bit more on some of these other issues and questions that you all have. So thank you, Julie. Yep. Um, let's see. What other... Oh, yeah. So, Julie, for contracts, I don't ask my clients to do anything. <laughs> you know, I suggest like this would be a good time, not the same day as a photo shoot. But if you have a dog that gets groomed, do that a couple of days, a day before, maybe. Um, I really don't like it when they get the dogs groomed the same day because they're already like that was a big day out, right? And then they have to do another big day out where they're expected to do things again. So I just try to gently ask my clients to not do that. Um, and I don't ask them to do any training. They're, they're not going to work miracles in a week. <laughs> they're just not or two or whatever, you know? So I just work with it. I, I can get the shot whether they can sit still or not. Um, and they, they're just so re like relieved when I say that. Um, so I don't really have any prerequisites <laughs> for my clients as far as that is concerned. I give them ideas on what to wear, um, what the dog could wear potentially, what they can bring. Um, and I went over a lot of that in my planning meeting video that I did with Frank a few months ago. Um, so a lot of that's in there. Uh, so that would actually be a good video to go back and watch because if you thought that's something you wanted to have in your contracts, you might find some things in that checklist that you can just go ahead and add in the contract. Things like, especially things like the weather. Um, so that those are some things I would suggest. What else did you say on here? Yeah, um, and when I give people ideas on what to wear themselves, if they're going to be in the pictures. So a lot of that was in that video. Um, I hadn't really thought about putting some of those in the contract, though. <laughs> but it, that's totally up to you. You know, I know I did see that somebody does ha have that in theirs, or I watched it on something. I watched somebody's um, presentation, and they said, oh, she she makes her clients go out and make sure their dogs can sit. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. I wouldn't do that. That's a client. I'd be like, no, next. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. I have a million things to do already. And I've had this dog. And you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going to do my best. Like there's some I tell people unless they're on medications or have health concerns, only feed them half their breakfast, or none of their breakfast. So they, if they're food motivated, they're extra hungry, or dinner, or whatever time of day it is, I tell them for cats and dogs to do that. Uh, you know, so I give them some guidance. If they're very energetic, go on a super long walk or your regular jog and then do a brush out and come on down. <laughs> if they have big beards, don't let them drink, uh, you know, submerge their head in a bowl of water. <laughs> Make sure they get their water, you know, stuff like that. Um, and a lot of times some of that you don't even have to bring up because that's not that kind of dog, you know. Um, so yeah, I should probably have a lot more in there. Like if your dog gets off leash, not my fault. <laughs> um, I've had dogs do that, get off leash and run across the, the whole field or jump in a lake. And I've had dogs do that at my sessions and it's, it, I wasn't the one holding them. The owner was, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. There's all kinds of what ifs, but they just hardly ever come up. I guess I'm just... <laughs> I'm just hopeful. Oh, goodness. Uh, let's see. Pixie Set is adding lots of features now that I'm slowly moving everything in there. Yeah, you know, one of the things about Pixie Set too, Senior Yaxon, is that you could do your website there. And I don't really know what would go into that. Uh, I thought that was an interesting take. Like, okay, if you don't have a website at all and you're already using Pixie Set, well, why not build it through there? If you do a lot of delivery of their, you know, proofing gallery or their deliverables through there. And you can also put videos in there too. too. Um, so interesting, right? Yeah, they are adding a lot. You're welcome, Julie. 
Uh, what about fees or permissions to shoot at specific locations? Yeah, um, that's true. And I don't often um, run across that. So we do have some parks up in Fort Collins that you're supposed to get, I believe. And, and the one time I tried, I called the city and I said, hey, I want to do this family photo session at um, the city park. And they're like, yeah. And I said, okay, do I, do I need anything? Because your website says I need something. And they said, oh, psh, as long as you're not like set up with a table and a bunch of lights and you're just sitting there for hours, nah, you're fine. I said, well, it's a family. I'll have a light, but it's only just the one family. I'll be there less than an hour. We'll kind of move around the park. She's like, meh, it's fine. <laughs> and so they don't, it's, it's interesting because sometimes when you're out at these locations, I've been with camera clubs where we're just doing stuff for fun. And the rangers come by, the park people, and they're like, what are you doing? Is this a paid session? So I haven't had a lot up in those parks recently. But yes, you definitely want to do something because some of our places now have entry fees. And so definitely I let clients know, hey, we're going to go. Uh, when we did the Devil's Backbone one, there is a fee to get in there. And so we both made sure that we had our pass or paid the daily fee up at this reservoir. Same thing. Um, so those we usually talk about a lot ahead of time and they're individual, individual basis. Um, and so usually, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, OK, cool. <laughs> and then, you know, we kind of go on from there. But a lot of places do have um, a per excuse me, a permit process. And you definitely absolutely never want to schedule a whole string of mini sessions or something in a park unless you have absolute permission. You need to pull the permits, do whatever you need to do. That's not on your client, but you need to let your client know you're doing that. Um, we had this pumpkin patch here and I was going to do some little, you know, kind of mini session type things there. And a little story time. We're going to veer off to the side for a second. Um, I went to this little pumpkin patch, uh, kind of more of a farm. Um, like they had a cute barn and they had the pumpkins up in trays and stuff. Very, very cute setup. And in, in little piles, you know, white pumpkins over here and kind of gnarly pumpkins and orange ones. And it's just a beautiful backdrop. And so I know from experience that you get permission from those kinds of places. And this is private property, obviously. So um, sunflower fields, pumpkin patches, Christmas trees lots. I know from the past that pr photographers have a different set of, of things they need to set in place before just showing up with a client. And so I was talking to her about that. And she said, um, yeah, you'd be shocked. There's they've had she said one day I was sitting out here because they've only been doing this, like as an open to the public thing for a couple of years, like right before COVID. And she says, I'm sitting here on the porch, watching this lady with a clipboard. And she's, she's here all day not doing any of the things like a hayride or getting cider or ice cream or whatever. And she said, I finally walk up to her. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and she had a full on clipboard, this children's photographer and had scheduled out a whole entire day of family mini sessions during their busiest day of the week, which is like a weekend. And so while they're having people just come in and enjoy the farm and get their pumpkins, this photographer had taken it on herself without any permission to set up her families in these pumpkins in this small, small farm. <laughs> she's like, I hate to be this person, but you can't do that, you know? And she's charging such a minimal fee. So definitely with those kind of things, oh my gosh, right? Is that a crazy story? Can you believe that? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I answered that, Julie. So definitely it's not on your client. It's on you to do that unless they're coming in a separate car to a location that just is generally has an entry permit. So uh, all kinds of private properties need it. Um, you know, one place that's really beautiful here is uh, Colorado State University, CSU. Oh, my gosh. And bigger universities, if they have any ag department, one of the things they do in the ag department is beautify the place. Um my mom, when she was in college, while I was in high school, she managed the greenhouse and she was in all these classes and they would do tours around the college campus because they had planted specimen trees and bushes and it's just kept up so beautifully. So college campuses are open. You don't need a permit. And on the weekends, there's hardly anyone there. So it's really kind of perfect for a lot of people a lot of the times. Cool, right? Um, so there's different ways. And I know some towns have a lot more permit process than others. Like I can't even imagine being a portrait photographer in LA. 
They're so used to movie productions there that every single place charges a fee. Like, I don't think you could even stand on the street corner in LA and do a photo shoot. I'm not sure, but um, definitely look into it for any private property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's why, like, on my my marketing, I said, hey, I got special permission. And that's how I said it. I, you know, we're not going to just show up and surprise these farm owners. This, she didn't even buy a pumpkin. This gal doing all these mini sessions didn't even buy a pumpkin. Can you believe that? The knife. The knife. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Soapbox done. Uh, let's see. What do you got, Julie? K State has a beautiful. Ooh, yeah. It's shocking how long like how well they can plant all the different flowers and how well they've planned where different bushes and things are just gorgeous. I know the, the college my mom went to in Washington, they had a sister school in Japan. And one time, I don't know, it had to be like 50 years ago, Japan sent over 100 Mount Fuji flowering cherry trees, at least a hundred. And they lined two sides of this big, there's a big grassy area. And then there's this row of Mount Fuji flowering cherries, but it wasn't just a row of one. It was a row of two. So two rows here and then the lawn and then two rows here. And so when those bloomed, oh my gosh, I'm getting goosebumps right now. I used to live just a few minutes from this when they bloomed and all the pink petals and they're not very tall and they would, the pink petals would fall. You get a tunnel of pink. Oh, just gorgeous. Oh my gosh. So Jordan a CSU has something called the oval and there's this row of trees oh, that's really cool too but they're giant they're like big cottonwoods you know um but still hmm so pretty so yeah k-state Ooh, hoo, hoo. uh let's see here in houston there's a need for a permit for any of the public parks but there is no enforcement <laughs> i feel that i feel that right and as long as you don't like abuse it you know what I mean? I think there's probably a way you can get a, like a one year permit and just kind of keep it on you all the time. I do so little of that. I would just have to pull a single permit at a time. But really, like, you know what it's like, Senior Yaxon. You go during a quieter time. You don't get in the way of people recreating there. And, and no one has a problem with you, you know? Yeah. I'm not saying break any rules. I don't want anyone to misconstrue that. Um but just, you know, be, be nice. <laughs> oh my gosh, Catherine, how is the weather up north? Alaska land. Ooh, hello. It's good to see you. Hi, hi, hi. Um, and Julie, you're not that far from me. If you're just over in Kansas, I'm, I'm assuming Kansas. What? I don't know why. I mean, there's other states that start with a K. Maybe you're in Kentucky. <laughs> Um, what other questions do we want to talk about? Julie, did I talk about that sufficiently? Should we talk any more about it? But I did write a note here too. Um, I think I went over the whole list of what I'm com what's coming up. Th and, and some of these are coming up this year. Um, one thing that I'm kind of uh, fleshing out that I'll be presenting is, um, I'm pretty sure, okay, this isn't set in stone or figured out completely yet, partly because, yeah, I've got my BIC launch. I'm going to see my daughter and um, grandkids. I have a new grandson. Um, oh, you're near Lawrence. Okay. You know, so I'm going to a week to Georgia and Thanksgiving and all this stuff. And then my editor is going on maternity, <laughs> is having a baby. But in the midst of all this, what I would really love to do, <laughs> maybe the week after Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving in the U.S., maybe like the first week of December, last week of November, <clears throat> what I would like to do, oh, oh, good, is um, a week of like a mini course, like a five-day course kind of um, work through, but hold it on YouTube. So <clears throat> what I'm thinking is having a week of marketing and every single day I'll go live and then give you a workshop and then that'll be for a few minutes, you know, 20 minutes ish, and then we'll open it up to Q and A and it might be like an hour, but it'll be this format. So you won't have to sign up for email or, or go find me on Facebook or go to a zoom, anything like that. It'll be on YouTube. 
So that's my idea for coming up a little bit later this year is to have a whole week of marketing and be like a little mini course. Now, obviously, I'll have some downloads and things and you can sign up for that. So uh, that's kind of what's on the horizon for me. And that will be leading into um, opening up the community center over on ProPet Photog because I'm revamping that entirely. And I'm really, really excited to tell you about that. And that will, I'll know a lot more in the November Q&A and obviously be on the email list because that's where you're going to see it first. And I'm going to have some cool things for the first few people that sign up. My BFF and I are working on that. Yes, I'm very excited. All right. Julie, near Lawrence. I'm wondering if my husband went to that same college years, many, many years ago, because he has this story about how he he was in college and then he decided he wanted, after he was done, he was going to ride his bike. So he rode his bike from Lawrence to um, Boulder, Colorado, <laughs> all the way across Kansas and halfway across Colorado. And that's where he ended up. And he's been in Colorado ever since. This was many years ago. Isn't that funny? Okay, good. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's been good. Hop it. Hoping for snow soon. Taking lots of pictures of your kitten. Hoping to take holiday photos of the dogs by November to get those pictures out. Oh, fun. Yes. Are you forecast to have snow pretty soon? We haven't really had much at all. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember if that's the same university he went to. I'll have to ask him again. I don't know. He went to his uh, college in Illinois too. And all I know is he went to college because he wanted to learn how stars worked. And so he got a physics degree. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. And then he rode his bike here. <laughs> um, yeah, we had a teeny tiny bit of snow up in the mountains this fall, but nothing down here yet. Like it's 70, 60 something degrees today. And we might have like a freeze warning. So we're picking our final tomatoes today. Like it's mid-October. That's crazy. <clears throat> and sorry, excuse me, my family's in the Northwest and there's a big fire near them. So I just want to make sure that I'm not getting any notifications. Okay. I think that's good. My new grandbaby who's going to be seven weeks this week, I think. He was very sick and in children's hospital for three days, a week or a week and a half ago. Super scary. So I'm real excited to go see them the week before Thanksgiving next month. Next month. And I've got my book launch coming up. That's something else I need to do a video about is the whole book project. And I messaged the uh, printer today. I'm using Marathon Press. And they think it's going to mail out today or tomorrow. Can you believe that? I, I ordered all these books. And I can't wait to show you. Okay. Oh, by November 15th. You have, a, you have a month still. Lake is frozen. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Nice. Mm, okay. Yeah. I think one of the claims to fame over there is that several famous astronauts uh graduated from there is that right i remember seeing road signs one time when i drove through <laughs> i've been on a few road trips and i can't remember where i've seen everything wow <laughs> it's funny i talked to a friend of mine who used to do a lot of youtube and we were talking about driving <clears throat> and i said yeah i'm just not like a big fan of driving she goes oh my gosh for the number of road trips and camping and all the different travels you've done you don't love driving i said nah, that's the least great part of road trips is like the stress of being on the road with all the the big trucks and the construction and then the mapping and ah, I don't like that part so much <laughs> oh, that's funny but I have done a couple of cross countries and just kind of driven around the country I know you do what you gotta do to do the things you want to do that's what I figure uh what else am I forgetting to tell you all <clears throat> we still have 25 minutes left. So if you still have questions, we can talk about the business end of photography, uh, pet photography. We can talk about gear. We can talk. I talk a lot about gear. My goodness. My other channel is Cattail Chronicles and it's all landscape and wildlife photography and gear talk. And actually we broke a lens yesterday. One of our wildlife lenses. Ouch. 
after this, I'm taking, I'm going down to FedEx. I've got a label already to send it off for repair. Mm. Um, so I talk a ton about gear over there. So I haven't talked as much about gear here on this channel, um, but we can talk about gear. That's fine. I have a gear video coming up on Friday. Frank is going to talk all about his Nikon camera. So we've recorded that. That's the video I just sent off to my editor. That's coming out Friday. I'm a Sony shooter. Uh, Frank is a Nikon shooter. Uh, we could talk about editing, you know, all kinds of different things. So anything you might want to talk about on here, we can do that. Oh my gosh. Oh, senior Yaxon. You know, it's really, really sad is we've already sent this lens in once for repair. <laughs> And it was our fault. It's it's our fault. As far as I know, the first time it was just kind of like, I wonder what's this lens doesn't seem to quite be doing well. Cause he, we have two, I use one and he uses one. Um, and the one lens that he was using just wasn't like focusing quite right. It just seemed odd. And so we just sent it in for evaluation. Sure enough, it needed to be repaired. So we did that. I have Sony uh, pro support. We did that. We did a whole video on it and so we've been trying to do better, but it was on a tripod, a sudden, like out of nowhere, gust of wind came by, mm, fell on the ground. Thank goodness the camera is fine. The camera itself is worth way more than the lens in this, in this circumstance. Um, so, but it was super sad. Like, oh no, we have to set it in again, again. We almost had ice cream for dinner because <laughs> we were so bummed. But you know, what's crazy is we swapped lenses. He put the lens I was using on his camera and we finished that video for that YouTube channel. <laughs> and he got some really great pictures of the sunset. <laughs> Can you believe that? Oh gosh, we are not looking forward to that bill. I'm going to look into my business insurance too, though, and see if I can have it covered that way. I don't know. Use Fuji. All right. What do you think of Fuji? <clears throat> I follow a couple landscape photographers on YouTube. And uh, is it Thomas Heaton? He has this like landscape pano type Fuji. It's like, looks like a beast. I don't know. Um, so he enjoys using that occasionally. <laughs> it's not like his all the time camera. I'm pretty sure that's a Fuji. And does it Adam Gibbs that also is Fuji now? I don't know. Yeah, interesting. You love it. You love it. Yeah. You know, old school, Julie, it used to be like, I'd always think of Fuji, like Fuji film as being kind of more on the green end. And then like, um, you know, Kodachrome is kind of reminds me of Canon cameras on kind of the warmer end. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So then what would Sony be like slide film? <laughs> I don't know if y'all ever, if you ever worked with um, analog cameras, I suppose. Um, <laughs> kind of these preconceived notions of what colors look like that everyone kind of swore by. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Who's messaging me on Facebook? Okay. No, I'm good. All right. What else do we have coming up? Um, Oh, also coming up, I photographed some kitties in my studio, um, kind of with this color paper, this green. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's called, but we have a cat cafe here in my town. And I've known them. I've done some work with them over the last year while they were doing pop-ups while this was built out. They've hired me for some things. And I said, hey, in your new space, can I do some pictures to put up in there? And they're like, sure. Um, <laughs> so I photographed their kitties and we, uh, I just installed those pictures. I want to say Wednesday last week. Yeah, Wednesday. Uh, Steve helped me out. They were 20 by 30s and we put them on. We actually did the 3M on the wall and then they're going to build some frames around them. So um, I'm trying to maybe wait until they do that piece. But I have a whole video from... Uh, the shooting, the actual photo session in the studio, to um, a little bit of editing, to hanging it up on the wall at the Cat Cafe. Uh, so that's coming up. Um, I also, uh, Habic Human Animal Bond in Colorado hired me to photograph some of their dogs for their fundraiser for the labels on coffee. So they do a collab with a local coffee roaster and they need new pictures for the labels. And so as soon as that coffee comes out, but not, it's not till like the first part of November, um, then I'll, I want to get that coffee and then I'll show you the whole thing of photographing those dogs and ta-da, here they are on a coffee label. So that's coming up too. 
Oh, they do? Oh, that's cool. Oh, Velvia. Yeah. This, just saying Velvia kind of gives you the warm and fuzzies, doesn't it? <laughs> I love that. Hey, Kelly from uh, North Dakota. Thank you. ND, right? North Dakota. You're not that far from me, actually. Because um, it only takes, what, five hours to get through Wyoming, I think? Yeah. Because... Um, it just kind of depends on which way you go about Wyoming. North South is five hours. East West is a, a couple hours longer, I believe. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So you probably have a little bit cooler weather up there, Kelly. Keeley. Sorry, Keeley. Woohoo. Yay. Um, Keeley, we were talking about what. Uh, what questions you have that we can answer right here on a live stream and what questions uh, that you would like to see a produced video made for. So I've got kind of a list, all kinds of lists going. <laughs> uh, so Keely, do you have a pet photography business? Are you a volunteer? Um, what do you like to photograph? I should ask that of you too, Julie. Um, what do you like to photograph? Or where do you photograph the most? Yeah, that'd be fun to know. Because I know some some people on here already. I forgot to mention too, Senior Yaxon has a, a YouTube channel. So click on his name here in the chat and uh, be sure to follow him because he does also pet photography content. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So uh, do a shout out there. And and remember, Senior Yaxon, your dad jokes. He has epic dad jokes and I live for those. <laughs> um I should also oh gosh I went to a women's conference SBDC Small Business Development Council part of SBA Small Business Association through the United States government um so they have these offices all over the country and Northern Colorado had their women's annual women's conference last week and they hadn't had it you know since pre-covid Oh, it was phenomenal. It was so good. Just you're in this room of 300 other women. There's like four different tracks for breakouts. We I went to a lot of the marketing ones. There was marketing, there was health and wellness, there was uh, panels of people you could talk to. Of course, it's SBA. So they talk about funding. There was um, vendor tables, which is mostly banks. <laughs> You know, um, but it was really, really fantastic to go to that event again. And just the energy in the room just got me so psyched up. Um, that was fantastic. I highly recommend looking into your local small business development council. Um, we have them all over Colorado. Like there's one in Fort Collins and one in Loveland and they're not that far away. Uh, so they have all kinds of like um, coffee before work and beer after work kind of like really um, casual business meetings where you can really just kind of sit and talk to someone in a networking setting instead of, um, you know, some networking meetings are very structured and you have people come in and teach, which is good too. But some of these are, are kind of nice to go to. It's kind of like, you know, how the, um, <clears throat> the chamber has all kinds of different mixers, kind of like that. Yeah. Julie says commercial licensing would be interesting if you haven't done one already about commercial licensing. Oh, goodness. I have to say, Julie, I don't know much about that. Is that what you do? Um, do you do a lot of commercial photography? There is a really good Facebook group. You're probably already in it, though, if you're wondering about this. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I think it's the business of commercial photography. Uh, commercial. Well, I think I ended up looking my my groups. Please hold. Please hold. Um, have you already heard of it? Oh, oh, okay. Do you, is that something you want to do more of? Business of commercial. I think she changed the name too long ago we'll see we'll see oh it's not coming up okay so commercial photography <laughs> just on my other screen i'm not um ignoring y'all i want to say that she's changed the name recently uh, 
my internet's the business of commercial photography. Okay. Uh, oh, by image crafters. That's it. Okay. I'll put it in the um, chat. I think it's it's a group, so you have to, you know, join. Um, <clears throat> but, Julie, if you want to click on the chat, there's a link there that will throw you over to uh, Facebook. She's part of Image Crafters. It used to be the business of commercial photography. Jamie Piper. So she's written books. She's really well known. Oh, my gosh. She has a lot of information about commercial photography, licensing, contracts, working with art directors, all kinds of things. Uh, really huge wealth of knowledge there. And her website to go with it is definitely something to look into. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, you possibly want to go into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? I would love to do that. Like, it's still work, you know, but it's kind of cool to be working on a project, you know, like a campaign. Okay, dad jokes at the end. I'm just gonna have to wait till the end. You're making us wait. Cha. <laughs> Uh, marketing for pet and equine. Nice. Ooh, yes. Kansas for equine. Oh my gosh. You got like the rolling, um, fields. Oh, that'd be gorgeous. Yes. Oh, did you do any of the, um, I've seen some really cool ones out in sunflower fields. Is that too cliche for Kansas? <laughs> Horses in sunflower fields. Oh my gosh. That sounds so great. Yeah. Um, I was going to do a session with a client of mine, her and her horse, but because she did a session this year with her dog, they're like, mm, we might have to wait and maybe till next year. But she's like, can I just do a business portrait session with my horse? Cause she, she works in kind of in the animal field too. <laughs> so I might do just a business session <laughs> with her and her horse, which would be fun. Um, yeah. What's another, another one? Oh, I was going to do, um, my client and her dogs out on paddle boards, but then she broke her foot. Um, so that didn't happen. Um, yeah, I, I'm always trying to get permission from clients to film anything I can behind the scenes for y'all. And definitely when I do the, um, the shelter stuff, like I should have one here in the next week or two. I'm, I'm going to go to the studio. I think after this or in the morning, uh, have a new backdrop I need to steam out. And, um, so I'm going to do some kind of winter look photos, uh, for the winter campaign for the shelter I do a lot of work with. And so, um, that'll be coming up as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also excited to talk to you. You know, Julie, one of the, the ways that I heard about book projects way back in the day at imaging was someone was doing a book on horses. So she knew a lot of people at the barns, local barns, and she ended up doing a whole book of, of all her clients. Um, and it was really a beautiful book when she wrote about, when she talked about it at imaging, it was such a cool idea. And, and I never had, I never really thought about it for dogs until I, until I did. Uh, they're like zoos anymore. Grincher Farm near Lawrence is well known. Yeah. So that's one of those places, Julie, that um, they probably have a special section and a special time just for photographers. <laughs> um, the going right out here is about $25 an hour. Um, so it's not too bad at all. Um, and actually the pumpkin farm, they said, you know, across the street, there's a field we never use. So we think we're just going to sprinkle a bunch of sunflowers out there. Not the traditional big, tall, giant head sunflowers, but the little ones that grow a whole bunch on one that grow out here in Colorado, just wild. She said, just till over a, a bunch in there. And she said, I would have that field just for photographers. I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> um, so that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's crazy this this year, too, from what I've heard from a lot of people is that they're just coming out of the coma of COVID going, I want to do everything. And so now there's so many things to do and so many people at them. It's a little overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, you have 14 horses. I'm on my way. Where's my keys? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I went with a group of ladies called Women Who Explore. One of my clients is one of the admins for them. And she's like, you should join and do some of these cool things. Like they go on hikes and just all kinds of things. And one of them was horseback riding in Estes Park, Colorado, which is right outside Rocky Mountain National Park. And I went to that and I hadn't, hadn't been on a horse in so long. I was sore. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> but it was fantastic. Just like 
the quintessential idea of riding a horse in the mountains and because they were kind of a, a, a little tiny bit outside the city and so we were able to walk up and down the hills and through all the trees and the leaves were just changing and you can see the mountain range and the oh my gosh it was amazing I used to love riding horses when I was a kid but I haven't done a lot of it since then so you've already gotten in with the horse community that's awesome Keely do you have any action photos with dogs? I'm trying to do dog agility shoots, but lighting is sometimes really difficult. Oh, yeah. Uh, any suggestions on that? Uh, oh, hmm. They don't, huh? Okay, bummer. Um, I thought if I ever bought property, I would do that. I would have a whole section with sunflowers I would plant just for that, just for photos, and a whole section of like lavender. Um, I would make my own. If you have horse property, you might just take, you know, a quarter of an acre and make make a little spot just for that. There's a gal in Virginia, and she's always posting about her farm. Oh, my gosh, it's gorgeous. I'll have to remember. Uh, okay, so action dogs. And if you're talking about agility, you're inside, which is kind of a bummer, Keely, because, yeah, it's whatever light you have in there. So sometimes it's a matter of how good your camera is with low light. Um, and that's one of the things like Frank noticed when he changed from his DSLR to mirrorless, the camera he went to, he specifically got it, uh, one that was rated for lower light because he did a lot of event photography. And so he was talking about how his new camera, the Nikon Z6 II, um, does good in low light. And so sometimes it's a matter of that. Sometimes it's a matter of having a fast lens. You know, uh, so by fast lens, I mean like a 2.8 aperture so you can get as much light as you possibly can. And then um, having a high frame rate, like shutter speed. My my Sony A1, I think does like ridiculous 30 frames per second more than film. <laughs> um, so I can get just a massive amount of photos. So um, yeah, kind of look at how far you can push your ISO. Look at how wide open you can have your aperture. Um, take a lot of pictures. What was the other thing? Um, oh, gosh, it just left me. Oh, uh, your focus options. Play around with all of your different focus options. Many cameras have like five or ten different ways. Like you can have a spot focus. You can have a whole frame focus. You can have it human, animal, bird. Uh, play around with different focusing. Um, yeah, so there's just a lot of trial and error that comes with that kind of indoor um, action photos. And something that's really helped me is wildlife. Um, so being able to just pick up my camera and spot a small animal, like a bird. <laughs> I do a lot of bird photography. Um, so wildlife photography will help a ton as well. And then um, practice, if you can, the different types. So like you might have a panning sideways versus a running towards you. And those are very different trying to focus and frame. Um, so lots and lots of practice around that. I want to do more of that too. Um, I, we don't have any off-leash areas here though, except for dog parks, which I don't want to go shoot in a dog park. So I, I'm kind of at a quandary there. How am I going to practice this if I don't have anywhere to go practice this? <laughs> uh, so long leads, I suppose. Um, so as much practice as you can possibly get. Yeah. Um, fast lens, yeah. Oh, rental lenses really help me with low light action doggos. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, especially if you're doing planned events you know so if you know it's only going to be once every two months that so you even have to do that you could just rent a lens for that weekend or that week or something if you're not ready to you're not sure like which lens to get especially which i always tell people rent it first for sure um yeah so rent them borrow them if you can and sometimes i mention that to people and they're like no no no, i don't want to have any responsibility for somebody else's lens um but i know a lot of great photographers i've been in camera clubs around here for 10 years um so you know I, i'm i've made friends with people in camera clubs i actually had my main lens break one time and I put it into the camera club. I'm like, oh my gosh, does anyone have this 200 to 600? Not 200 to 600. That's my wildlife lens. And the 70 to 200 that I could borrow for these shoots. And he's like, oh yeah, just come by work and grab it. I don't hardly use it. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're the best. So you might even have a friend with a lens. 
Yeah, I was thinking that too, Julie. Um, I just did a video production for a client who hand makes um, muzzles and leashes. She has these really cool, colorful, um, comfortable, custom fit muzzles, this whole thing. Um, and she also makes leashes, like a standard leash and a long leash. And I think I'm going to actually buy a couple of those, one to use while well, my dog herself needs a new leash, um, but a long one, yeah, for those type. Um, so that's a great idea. Do a really long line. <laughs> the horse lunge lines, those are a little bit too big to me to put on a dog. Um, just because they're like heavy and they're really difficult to edit out. Edit out. Um, so if you can get a thinner long lean that's still sturdy, I would go for that maybe. Or a helper. Um, so like if you had a helper with a long leash, <laughs> so the helper's out there and you're, you can be set up as if that dog didn't have a leash and a helper. So that's a possibility too. Okay, Senior Yaxon, that is like, I think an $15,000 lens. <laughs> yeah, I want it too. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to happen. Not, not this year for sure. <laughs> if my wildlife photography picked up, oh yes, uh, definitely. But we keep breaking our lenses. So, <laughs> but I had to like tell myself when the lens broke, like at least we had to go out. At least we had ourselves made ourselves like get out of the house and go out and take pictures. Like how often do we just go, Oh, I don't want to go. Well, then maybe just me. I don't know. Um, but we have nice equipment and we don't want to take it out. Well then it's just dusty, nice equipment. Who cares? Um, so at least we were out, we were doing something we liked in a beautiful day, beautiful time. I mean, you can't, you can't really be too upset. I mean, yeah, it's going to cost money, but we do have the other one. So if we didn't, didn't, weren't able to fix it now, we at least have the other lens, <sighs> but we were using our equipment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's expensive. And it was actually even sold out for a while. <laughs> Like, what? Wait, what? And that could have just been supply chain issues because they come from somewhere else, you know. But I, I am very sure. Let me see if I can. I, I know we only have a minute left. So um, if y'all still have questions, we got three minutes left to go here. Sony uh, 600 millimeter F4. Let's see how far off I was. Oh, 13,000. Yeah. Is that about what I said? 15,000? 13,000. I might be remembering someone from... Canada or another country saying their their rate, but yeah, <sighs> makes that one hundred to four hundred look damn right affordable. <laughs> oh my gosh! And that's not even the most expensive lens I've ever seen. Like, there's another one. Oh gosh, I don't know. Wildlife photographer I know uses one. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'd be really scared to carry that around. Ooh, no, mm -mm, not gonna do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Well, it's really been great talking to you all. Thank you so much for showing up to this. Um, I'll, we do this every month near the end of the month. Actually, let me pull up my calendar again, because we can just schedule next month because I don't want you to miss it. Next month, um, yeah, I, I'm thinking it's going to have to be, let's see, sisters here, book launch party, Savannah, and then Thanksgiving. So let's just say November 28th is our next live stream. YouTube live. So I'm going to put that in here. November 28th, mark your calendars. And um, next live. That could also be the week of or the week before I do the marketing week, the workshops. So lots coming up. I have so much to do. I need to be like doing things. <laughs> I got to go do the things. Ah, I have a really giant um, thing to put on the wall that is for planning out next year. It's got the first six months of next year on it. So ooh, trying to be organized. Yeah. Yay. You're welcome, Heather. Hope I <laughs> hope it was entertaining for the hour. <laughs> Oh, gosh. And y'all know if you have any questions, let's just run through these again. Um, you can head over to the Facebook group. That is a private group. Uh, we also have the open public Facebook 
page. Love for you to join there. That's a slow grow. If you have questions, you just want to send me directly right here. If you want to see what kind of courses and Canva templates and downloads and checklists, and if you want to schedule a one-to-one -one with me, go to Pro Pet Photog. Also, that's where you get on the mailing list. You don't want to miss the mailing list because I tell you all about these, uh, when the live streams are, what the regular YouTube video is going to be, all kinds of fun stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Comes out in that brief email every Friday morning. So, oh my God. Goodness, it's great to see everyone and chat with you. And our time is now up. So what do we say at the end of all these broadcasts? Say it with me. As always, I wish you many woofs, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's. Great to see you. Okay, uh, we'll see you on Facebook. All right, where's my button? Here it is. Okay, all right, bye, bye.